the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. gaming for years and Tim and Walter are like we should game again I'm like hey cool there's this guy I know from my Dark Age of Camelot guild yep. that's renting a house for my mom let's talk to them and let them play yep. I played like three years at that point I gave it up so they come over and it was a it was a fucking terrible Robin Walter's moving into it you're moving into your house over off of um, Independence Ave yep. yeah all of it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I fucking love that house Maybe. no I'm more Brown stuff. Hey, 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 hey. But she, um. Uh, yeah, I was was brown stuff. No, it was, uh. We went to Applebee's with them to, like, talk about it first. And I remember that was where he said that, like, the CIA told him that his, like, English accent was so good that no one could tell him. Oh, Jesus him. fucking Christ. I forgot, about, I forgot yeah, about that. He was one of those, like, Ren Faire oh, guys. He was, a, he was, like, he was the worst yeah. kind of Ren Faire guy. He was reputedly a CIA. I was I there? He, no, he was an he was an interrogator, <laughs> and then he said, and he made up some bullshit about like I was supposed to be king at the fucking Ren Fair because I was a better blah blah blah. He's yeah, doing his politics. voices. It was fucking super weird. <laughs> and the voices. Were oh god! Typical. Now I want to know if I knew this guy. The, the, the you probably did. It was like Snow. shitty like D and D English accent. It wasn't anything like. That's important to know, but I'm sure none of you were surprised that his He was the was, f- yeah, work fucking back. worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I used to work at Renfest, and so now I'm like, I wonder if I knew that. Yeah, he had ju- they had just moved to Kansas City. He wanted to break into this house for no apparent reason. Dan's like, like he got his if you do this, you, but he even warned him. He's like, you do this, and these people wake up. There's a chance they might kill you. You are a level one player. Because this is D&D, and he got his, guess what happened? He got fucking killed. <laughs> Well, he didn't get killed. He just kept, he kept missing, and the two of you yeah. walked outside, and he kept rolling. And I was like, his wife was trying to comfort him. He goes, "Get off me like that!" Because he kept rolling, fucking just he was rolling rocks. Yeah. Well, it was what? fucked up. And yeah. we're like, "Okay, we'll stop here, guys, died. and we'll start again later on." It yeah. never got to the point that anybody died. We never. Got no, to the we stopped. We stopped it. It was not. It was the. It was. It's the worst experience I've ever had. And we had some bad. And ones. we did, and we played with the furry for fucking five years, and he was great compared to. Yeah. I mean, I mean he, didn't, he didn't talk for the first year. And hey, a half. furries are real good at role playing. I'm just saying. Like, well, if he would have spoke, maybe for the first year and a half. I mean, seriously, he was you're really asking shy. too much. He had a lot of. He was very shy. A lot of. Got to the point that I didn't notice that he had cat feet on. I'd, I'd like, go to yeah. lunch with him, and I wouldn't yeah. even notice it. Um, people would be like, people would mock him. Like, I know, we did. Man, fuck you guys. Yeah, I know, right? Remember when he fucking got kicked? Remember when they fucking banned him from that game store? We were at a fucking riot. Remember that shit? What? We told him what game store was it? It was, um... No, I don't remember that. Mile High? Is that what it's called? Mile High Comics? Yeah, it was something. There was something in the world park. I think. Yeah, dude, we were we were totally like fucking ready to go there. You remember this tip? You were the only fucking. You were leading the charge. You're like, just fucking go there. Like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Tim was. We were ready to fucking defend him. We would go eat Mexican with him every fucking Sunday in the Mexican restaurant. People were fucking laughing. We didn't give a shit. Yeah. He didn't care either. He wore he wore a tail and legs like from calves down that he made and ears all the time, all the time, all the time mm-hmm. in public. Yep. It had to be hard to get a job, though, I know. He worked for the federal government as a data entry. They, oh. let, they let him wear his uh, dog collar. Huh. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. think a lot of places probably wouldn't be very patient with it. You know. get a job at the federal government. Mm-hmm. When we first met him, I think he was working at the, <coughs> the Independence newspaper. Yeah, he was. Uh, right. 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 They got so fired. Back when towns like that had newspapers. The Penny Whistler or the Penny... The examiner, wasn't the examiner. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like one of those the cheap ones. Though. Mm-hmm. Nah, he worked for a daily. We'd go there and print D and D shit off all the time. It was fucking awesome. He was their professional printing work. That's great. They're still doing. They were, just, they were moving away from typeset to computer 
Uh, or lay on the sun. Yeah, weird. Crazy times. Bam. Yeah, honestly, like, the one who was supposed to be normal in that group of friends of, of J, uh, was JT, and he was the fucking crazy one. Yeah, he held a halfway hostage. Uh, fucking, he held a halfway house hostage with a fake grenade. Oh. Huh. Was he supposed to be the same one? I thought so. <laughs> Until we met him. I, the only other thing I... Boy, were we fucking wrong. Okay. So we'll do a countdown here. Here we go. Pop. Get your tips. Now our story is how we fuck up names. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> so, this is pretty, pretty laid back. Now. Here we go. Welcome back to Queen of Embers, episodes 33 and 34. <laughs> I'm your headmaster, Daniel Fox. Um, this is the gang that played as the people who made Zweihander and uh, Main Galsh, by the way, which is a proof right here in my hand. Uh, amazing. Um, and not Queen of Embers. So we're actually on episodes 33 and 34. And we had just started chapter 2. And I've been thinking of sure, chapter three. And man, oh man, have we got a... Sorry, we're on chapter two, right? Uh, no, yeah, chapter two's no. over. Chapter, chapter two's three. over. That's right, chapter three, that's right. Chapter two is so, like... Seven episodes, six episodes ago? Uh, Something like that? Ten. Episode 20. With, the, with the death of uh, Professor Hausdorff. And the LaVinci chapter house. I just watched an episode wow. today, as fact, in a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Episode 20. Yeah. Yep. That's how long ago it was. Yep. We've been playing for a while. Wow. Wow! Wow! You keep letting wow. people in on the secret, though, man. How do you how do you do that? <laughs> it's like literally the worst kept secret. <laughs> yeah. You've had. It is, yeah. Yep. What's the worst kept secret? Dan, Dan breaks it every what, other like, time. Like where like we are compared to like where we're releasing Real videos. Like the time. It doesn't really matter. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, people know. know that. I mean, <laughs> everyone knows. If you're watching this, you know that this was already filmed like a month or so ago. This is not a great surprise. We split our episodes in half. Right, otherwise then ho- holidays or, you know, if we have to miss, then that's nobody, right. nobody will get nothing. That's right, like, end of the year is always tough, like, yeah, yeah. post remember, October. There might be a double con- con- content day. It's true. It's good one for content. Uh, double content double day. day. Yeah. Yeah. Double, double day. If you're listening or watching this episode, uh, my next wrestling show is probably, like, Next week, it's only yeah. in six weeks. Yeah. So you should go see that. You should July. It. If it's not July, if it's not July eighteenth or nineteenth, eighteenth, you should go see that. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're on episodes thirty three and thirty four. Uh, I think we just jump right in uh, where we left off last right. time. Uh, I think that at this point the stage is kind of set. Um, let's go ahead and do a a recap <coughs> of what what happened. So, maybe from... Mike, you want to tell the story? I always tell the story. Love it. And I talk too much, apparently. <laughs> and I say things for the group mm-hmm. that I shouldn't be speaking mm-hmm. Mike has been carrying with us in for the past seven oh, days. Oh, man, you just really... <laughs> yeah, okay, so, I... okay, so... Mike's fine. So we got yeah. to see... We got, we, we, got ish, we, got, uh, we got our audience with the Baroness. So what happened? The, well, Some of the details in between yeah. there during the audience... Uh, I mean, th- there was the whole pomp and circumstance of, of you know, us getting our names announced and, like, going through all the doors and, you know... Wearing fancy clothes. Wearing fancy clothes. Some people didn't dress up. Some people didn't dress up. I don't know who that was, but... I oh, didn't dress Lauren. up. <laughs> um, you were not in cosplay mode. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair, I guess, but... You Come know, as you are. It was... But then, uh, you know, she... She takes the audience with us, and she's got all these weird mirrors around her, and this uh, this artist name is Selfie. <laughs> What's his name? Selfie. <laughs> Selfie. I'm that just gonna call him Selfie. <laughs> Selfie. So Selfie is like doing some uh, using mirrors to show her how somebody can paint their own self <clears throat> from every angle. <clears throat> but I don't really think it's that, and I don't think anybody here believes that now after what happened. So she basically tells us that, uh, you know, what she's going to do, which we already know. She's going to break away from Aglador mm-hmm. and the kingdom and start up her own city-state. And then she asked us to take the um, lawyer, and what was her name again, guys? Barrister. The barrister. i uh, lawyer, sorry. Sorry, I only had eyes for the barrister. Oh, we know. <laughs> we all know, <laughs> We were all aware. 
Barrister uh, Mansfield? Right. Rosalia Mansfield. Rosalia Mansfield. So we're supposed to take her to her home in Kelterian. No, is that right? Kelandon. Not to her home. Kelterian to the west. That is one of the Kells. Kelterian castle. One of the Kells. Right. We must go to one of the castles. That's right. There are two castles, and I can't remember which one it is in your land. Which one are we going to? Kelterian. Kelterian it is. <laughs> what what is to happen in Kael Tyrion, Elisa? Oh, um, she is supposed to be meeting with uh, someone who is a uh, working with the Baroness to try to overthrow the king in the area. Um, we were supposed to take Wolfgang and Sammy Newhouse and Hiram Bigley with us, and they were going to discuss a. Alliance, I guess, is what it sounded like. The people of Kelterian. Yeah, it's a bit of that. Uh, with Lord Randall. <laughs> the long... But that's that's the mountain then. Oh, that's in the that's middle. That's how we get through. That's between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it'll take us a week to get there. That's what I've got. So... And then don't we meet with Hell's... Helsinki Stern. <laughs> Come on, Mike. I'm really pulling these out for you. You're not Thanks. Even... What? Helsinki Stern? No, maybe it's that you're doing a good enough job. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, we meet with him, and then he uh, he gives us more details, and he gives us all those people's names. and um, Master Hexenstern. Yes. Master Hexenstern tells us that um, really the barrister is the important thing. Yes. Because I asked, and I said, if these other people die, are we responsible for them? Because I was really trying to gauge what our responsibilities were. I don't think he liked that as much, but I didn't care. <laughs> and somewhere in the middle, the Baroness gave Harper the look. Right, the look. Mm-hmm. And then he promised She's all her lives to her. She's got the look! <laughs> <laughs> and then he promised that we'd die for her. So, that was good. We being he, will die for her. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of said, <laughs> "I believe the rest of the party is a little hesitant to rebel against the king, since the king is really the reason we have any authority in the kingdom." <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, so so there was a there was that plot to maybe perhaps go back to Steed's Hill. There was those. Yep. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And that kind of fell through. Well, maybe not yet. Because right. Warren, Warren, Warren had some shifty hands like he likes to have. He, I, I had an accident at the table. And, uh, you wet yourself? <laughs> well, I, I wet the, uh, I, I the contract. Uh, the, uh, the pitcher fell over all over the contracts. Sadly. And then ruined all the ink, so <laughs> Hexer Stern is going to have to redo them He's going to have to do an all-nighter. Yeah, and I guess Elisa will probably have to do an all-nighter, too. Yeah. Elisa stated that she didn't trust any people in the group. Well, many people in the group other than Carlin. <laughs> That's right. Specifically these two. So that <laughs> brings us to where we left off. Yeah. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Out, outside, you can hear the long rumble of thunder and you hear the pitter-pattering of rain against the glass panes of... Um, the dire straits where Texan Stern has just exited stage left back to Messiah Square and said that time is of essence and he antis- that he, they are anticipating meeting you in, in Westgate at a place called the Last Hearth tomorrow. They depart at noon. Which should give her Alicia, go ahead. A few X, you know, you got an hour or two on both ends. <laughs> 16 hours, maybe. To... Are we upstairs or downstairs? You're upstairs. Well, if you remember, none, none, of the, none of the other characters, other than we don't, don't, don't know. We don't even know. That's right. right. You don't. Don't. We no, return we... back to Elisa yeah. and. What? The. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. Yeah. We return back to Elisa and. Um, Terowin's conversation upstairs in private. Listen here. 
They already know that, that we're planning on going back to the state, so they were here for that conversation. They do. So, them knowing we're going back to Steed's Hill ain't going to change nothing. How long, is it go- how long is it going to take? I don't know. Um, would I have any idea? About half a day is half a day there on, in fair weather uh, <laughs> on foot. If I had a horse, I might be able to make it by the time we're supposed to leave. Oh, we only got one horse, and you know what that means. Papa's not going to let me pick Matthew. It's not a chance. Right, so you know what that means. Find another horse. No. What? Papa's going to take you. Papa. Yes. You, you, you already wish know. the man that pledged all, all of our lives <laughs> to this thought that he just fucking met. You want me to trust him. Yeah, he already knows we're going to Steed Hill. Do you see any other other options? I suppose not. I uh, like you having hands, even though you may be missing an elbow at the moment. It'll grow back, but your hands won't. Fine, we need to go now. <clears throat> so I'll, uh... Let's see. I'll, I'll go downstairs and catch to the four of them. With urgency, he brings you upstairs. <laughs> Everyone so, else? All of you, yes. Everyone, yeah. So we know the plan. This has been a slight change of plan. We don't know the plan, then. Well, yeah. It ain't much different. Instead of me going, because I need to show up to this meeting. You're going to need to take a... The thunder rumbles. Yeah. The, Are we on the window? Yeah, the uh, rafters shake and the roof trem- 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 trembles. What's wrong with trem- me? Trem- trembles. It trembles. <laughs> Shiver me trembles. Shiver me trembles. Oh my gosh. Your spurs trembling. What a timber trembles. That's a, you know, or it's a timber. Is that an order? Is uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Or I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Well, you look at that weather. I mean, roads could be flooded. Uh, I can do my best, but I ain't going to guarantee it. Listen in. You do what's safe. Alright. Just saying if we got to turn around. Here's the other thing, where are we headed? Someone who is paying attention. Kill Len. No. Kill Terry. That's to the east or west? The first we're hitting last toss. Oh wait, I'm asking out of character. I wouldn't know that. <coughs> it's to the it's to the west. So it's further yeah, yeah. it's further towards Aglo. That's right. right. So okay. all the castles are towards yeah. the west. Just think that. Uh well you see where well, Cassandra Malist is from. It's a it's at least a key. I mean, I said castle. <laughs> uh, castle. Right. Yeah, so, uh, and then, um, are there any places that are in between? Are there small settlements? Are there... So between Durindal and Caeltirian, before you reach the Steadwall Mountains, there is a town simply called Hastings. Because your travel between Durindal and Hastings is fairly expeditious. Until you reach the Steadwall, where you must navigate the mountain passes, until you reach Fiefstead. The holding of Lord Randall the Long. From, from Feastead, there are two ways to kill Tyrion. There's a direct way through the mountains, across the Axewater, and then through the Great Forest to reach Kale Tyrion. Or you go south through, Mount, through a place called the Blackfire Pass to a little settlement called Almeron's Gates and then head north to Kale Landon. I'm sorry, Kale Tyrion. So. If I remember right, we were discussing taking an alternate path, but doesn't that mean that we're still going to go to Hastings? Everyone has to meet you at Hastings. That's it. You see, we show up in the morn with four of us. We sent you two to scout ahead. You leave straight from Steed's Hill, 
towards Hastings. <clears throat> Steed's Hill is uh, south of Durandal toward Kurth. Right. Kurth! <clears throat> so you have to hurry and triangle. Traverse this. You still have to come to the city. Oh, you do? Basically. Yeah. Unless you want to go around the, the hill. Unless you want to go to the hills. Yeah, the Stormhorn Hills are not, uh... They're... Or, you're rough. Or you state that we're finishing the business that needs to be taken care of in the town since we had to leave on short notice. And we shall catch up. That's a better idea. So what happens when they show up with nothing? No, this business... Business doesn't mean items. Alright, alright, yeah. I mean... I have no other option that I can think of. We'll no. go then. Yeah. This means That's what this. I say. So we'll meet you at the gate or we'll meet you in Hastings? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, Hastings. We'll meet us at the gate. Well, right. if we could. If you can, if you can make it, meet us at the gate. If you don't see us, meet us in Hastings. If we can't make it back by noon tomorrow, we go to Hastings. Well, you'll be on horse and we'll be on foot. No, you get horses. Oh, we're getting horses too. That's uh, even, David, he would try to arrange that. Even so, one horse uh, is going to outpace a uh, car or wagon or whatever they've got. Take your time. No, if I recall rightly, before he said we were going to get horses. Then I did my little number on his uh, yeah. papers and uh, said he couldn't manage. Either way, horses are no. We're going to be slower than two people on one horse. That, that we are. Because I don't imagine that they'll be taking this important person on horseback. Gonna have it covered somehow. Mm -hmm. All right. Well then, um, Harper's gonna slide you uh, three gold coins mm -hmm. and tell you, uh, here, take this and the shield, and I'm gonna have you get me a metal shield and a military lance. They are gonna open up the access to the military. Stuff, then that's what I want. Shouldn't cost more than that if you trade. Alright, well, let's get to it then. Yes. Because I'll make sure I'm wearing my riding clothes and my mm -hmm. yeah. wilderness well, cloak and yeah. tell you to hold on tight. Yeah. On Outside, the two of you hop on the back of Matthew the Storm Horse. <laughs> and you settle off into the night, yeah, yeah. lashing of rain. Flashing of lightning, the rumbling of the storm. Should be fine. It's a storm horse. And you leave beyond Durindal, <laughs> and the two of them disappear, leaving you to rest the evening. The night is long and wet. The ride is tough. The rugged hills, panting horse. You will need to be able to. You will need to succeed in your case, uh -huh. Harper. Yes. A hard ride test. This is a fail forward test. Yeah. If you fail it, you both will suffer from fatigue. Okay. But if you'll currently fail it. Mm -hmm. Don't cover that. that. Don't be <laughs> Normally fifty. Just don't. don't. Hard will be thirty. Okay. <clears throat> That's an eighty-three. I'll go ahead and spend my mind to re well, Actually, no, I don't need to, because I get that as a professional trait. Here comes the cavalry. So when I fail a handle animal or ride test, I may re-roll using... Yeah, so... 30? That's a 33 critical failure! Oh, no! Oh, no! Why? That's the worst kind of critical failure, the ones that are actually good mm -hmm. rolls. Firstly... What? Talents? Both of defense, you are no. in the middle of the hills, not just very far outside of Durindal. As you suspected, look at the book. The, the only thing I can think of is Saddleborn. It might give me a plus 10% chance, but I think that was to strike with melee weapons. I'm relatively so. sure I figured it fit. So, <laughs> you both are thrown from the horse, as you suspected. Plus 10 to strike. Harper. It is strike? From horseback or vehicle. As you suspected, Harper, unfortunately, I get my. Unfortunately, um, you're both into the horse. The, the 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 roads are washed out. 
yeah. um, making it to, you're in the middle midst of like these surrounding villages that are kind of nestled up near the walls of Durendal in the hills and um, it does you no good there is a flash of lightning and it strikes somewhere out in the distance and Matthew rears up throwing the both of you off the back and as you both uh, suffer uh, six, seven damage um, and it ignores armor Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've become lightly wounded. <sighs> Matthew tumbles to the ground. Matthew tumbles to the ground. <coughs> His leg seemingly broken. Oh yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's Matthew. Wait, technically that's what you would do. <laughs> but we can still use him for for uh meat. Because it's done. Meat a lot of stuff. Yes. Meat. Me, yeah. Yo, so your uh your steed suffers a uh has a has a broken a broken leg. Has a grievous injury. Okay. And cannot move as it is lying on the ground. Oof. The animal. Whinnying and neighing in extreme pain, you, the animal that is, you pull on the reins trying to bring Matthew up, commanding him to stand on his feet. I mean, if I Every, notice he has a broken leg, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. It isn't until you kind of get him up on his feet that he collapses once more, do you realize the extent of the damage. You can see around the knuckle where those two bones meet. The bone is splayed. Well, the animal's wet, draining out. You both have the wind knocked out of you, falling to the ground. I mean, Harper's obviously cursing. <laughs> A lot. I won't, I won't do that. But, yeah. He's very upset. You see, he's visibly angry. He's mostly cursing at you guys. <laughs> Terrible idea. Never should have done it. What are the two of you going to do? So how far out are we from? You're just outside of Durandal. Critical failure It's the worst possible ca- worst case scenario. Yep. You've gotten far very, you get very far at all. Well, you probably should get walking. See if they can get me a cart. He ain't walking back. I'll stay with Matthew. Suppose that's the only option. Yeah. Yep. You said we're on the far side, or one on the south side of town, right? You are, yes. Where is the. Bring an animal vendor. We're going to need that coin back from. Where is the. the um, What's her name? Vice. Who? Oh, oh. probably. Vice. She's in Riverside. How far is that? Uh, quite a ways. You have to go through Founders Square, then you have to go through, uh, sorry, Messiah Square, and then the Founders Square, and then Riverside. She's almost in the, in the, mi- in the middle of Durendal, almost. The epicenter, if you will. Would I know if there's an animal vendor somewhere nearby? You didn't know any animal vendor, save for Endora. And she's on the other far end. She's no. in Slatter. She's in uh, Slum Row. Slum Row. Where we're at. The only animal vendor you know of. Keep in mind, you all have not made very many friends in the city. Mm-hmm. <coughs> enemies. Made some enemies, yeah. <laughs> Good with yeah, that. Those you are know, like friends, right? Yeah. You know Warren? He could, he could probably do it. <coughs> are you intending to get an animal vendor out here to help Matthew? Is Matthew. that your intention? Yeah. It looks like you're on the fence, Elisa. Yeah. Are you pacing, thinking about your options? <laughs> so I have one other idea of what could possibly be done, but I don't think that's going to work. That's who's the best option. <laughs> what would be closer, Endura or the end? Dire Straits? Probably the same. 
talking to Nick within a half hour, but... Then she's going to go back to Dire Straits. And? Um, let Terwin know what happened. Well, Terwin and the others are asleep. Did you... Bump, 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 bump. Don't wake them up, yeah. <laughs> About two hours have passed. You heard, this, you heard the tolling of the bells at the witching hour. <clears throat> Melissa is drenched. <coughs> what happened? Modest tits, what are you doing back? Couldn't handle Matthew through the storm. <clears throat> He's dead? No, but it appears his leg is broken and someone needs to go take care of him. But someone needs to continue on. Oh, or should not. It's going to take me longer. But... Take care of him? I don't know about horses. I'm not familiar. That's a storm horse. That's about that's a valuable piece of horse flesh. Can't be just putting it out just like that. Go do what you need to, but I need to go. Warren starts putting on his cloak and getting ready to go. Got it. You have a scary in the heel, right? Mm-hmm. You have a skill rank in heel level. Mm-hmm. You already know that you will need three times the supplies to treat a horse. Oh crap. That's, uh, so, so you're basically intending to perform surgery on an animal. So you need three bandages? Three bandages and? Three seed three pods of opium? Maybe, I don't know. You're looking at the rules. Uh-huh. Regardless, a terrible situation that will without a doubt delay you. And um, <clears throat> We have one other option. What's that? Possibly we could get a message there with one of our friends that does not have alliance with this town. Possibly get the message sent to us at Hastings. And the only person I can think of that we know as well, one of our good friends, the Banneker maid. Oh, yeah? Yes, the ambassador. How oh, that friend? Frau Weiss? <laughs> it's the only person that I know of that doesn't have the ties that we do here. And I don't much as I would love to continue on with Steed Hill, I don't think that it's wise at this point. I would not be able to catch up, and if I did, they would not trust my intentions. Well, we we need to take care of Matthew first. So, understandably, but I don't think that... Taking care of the horse is, of course, important, but mm-hmm. I don't think we can take care of our other missions as easily right. without transport. So you you say in well, we talked to Fred Weiss and see if we can get a message delivered through her and ask for a return message at Hastings. That's all I can think of. I. If I have no transport, I can't make it there in a timely manner. I don't know how to ride a horse. You already feel all your eyes getting droopy. You all are very tired. Well, I can go see them, the, the madam, in the morning. Um, is this horse even, you said this horse is Sally? I mean, we can save this thing? He's gathering his supplies now. He's loading up his surgery kit, his leather, it's got a leather folding bag with the, almost like bait, what is it, these fishing boxes where they have like the, uh, the things that kind of come out with the different knives and... It's worse than we're saving. Even if it wasn't, we asked something greater than, of Arthur, and he did it, even though he didn't want to. We owe it to him. So what will you do? A decision must be made, unless you lose the knife. I'm going to go... Warren will go save the horse. Um, I do need to buy one seat. I'm assuming Elisa will take you there? Yeah. I need to buy one seat pot of opium. Unfortunately, you're not able to buy anything at this time of night. Okay. Unless you wish to spend a reputation point. I don't have a reputation point. Elisa will. Okay. What's the five team? No, it's necessary. Drawing up on Call your resources from Andorra, you will, you will, you two will fade into the background. Sure. They are gone. <clears throat> so, so, boss, are we divide and oh, that they're gone. Okay, I was like, we're gonna divide and conquer. I guess we are. Yep. <laughs> it's your decision. Well, if you want to 
lean into nod yet, but lean into Frau Weiss because I don't know if I can trust you. You'd know more than any of us. Well, I mean, one, one you night. Know, you've known her. It was one night. We're turtled out. What are we talking about? You've got about more here? to go off of than I do. What are you talking about now? The woman from the, the, the Gothic woman. The Gothic woman. Alistair doesn't know much about what happened there. I don't know what you're talking about. We got invited to a dinner uh, after we saved the, the orphans. Somehow my name got brought up as the savior of the orphans. I don't know. Okay. I really don't remember anything of the night. Uh, she good to fix on she got to fix on horses then, I'll tell you. No, no I, don't, I don't believe this woman could, uh, could could do much of with horse flesh, as the man said. <laughs> do we need to go help them with this horse? Left it in the cart? Or... The horse is already left. They're, They're already, already gone. gone. Yeah. I don't know where it is. <laughs> well, then if uh, we are useless on this horse, I'm going to go back to bed. Uh, What's so the point of talking this over until morning? I can't. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go wake her. No. That's true, I mean... Feels like there's an awful lot of secrets, boss. No secrets. Why Gothric that? woman... No, no, no we're not talking about He's that. He's not talking about that. Man and woman... Everybody's got their little secrets. Not you. No. I always know where you are. <laughs> you ain't that hard to find. Trust me, it's one I don't want. They don't rightly bother me much. Short of it putting me in danger, but no, like no. the man said, it feels like at least some of us should be well rested when the shit hits the fan in the morning. I ain't rightly much else we can do, right? Right. So you're our last chance at getting any word to detail and any response, at least as far as I can think of. How do we get a response on the road? We have a delivered instinct. Are you want us to walk to Steed's Hill, is that what you're saying? No, she was thinking that maybe she, your your contact had some influence and could get a message to uh, to Steed's Hill. I see what you're saying. Write up what you want. I'll take it to her. But, but again, I don't, I don't believe this woman is... I don't, I don't believe this woman is our ally. I slept with her once. Well, if you... Modest tits. I mean, it's just a woman and a man doing, you know, what women and men do. What would that be? Describe If you think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Modest tits. Again, I will not. You know what I'm saying. If you... He smirks at you, obviously, like, pulling your good. <laughs> you know... There's no Alistair, you're just trying to pull my goat. Listen, Ian, if you think it's more of a risk... Than a reward, then we won't do it. Let me sleep on it. I would say. I already did that one. See <laughs> <laughs> <Alistair>. you! <laughs> I will never speak of these. In, uh, this is why you don't get involved in the secrets. They aren't even secrets. <laughs> No, 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 no. Out, no. I do. Um, yes. <laughs> I'll, um, we did I'll, what it had to do. <laughs> Is there no other agents that we know of? What, in the city? Yeah, that's what I mean, boss. We're the only ones. Wow. Well, then I say, this is my thought. These, The other three are going to be dead to the world. Alistair's got to get us... He's going to have to somehow get the food. And we're going to have to somehow get the food that... Uh, Warren was planning to get us. And since I don't know what f- food to get for a road trip, besides, they have food. onions, cheetahs. <laughs> no. mm-hmm. my, my old job was they have food I don't. I took it from them. That's that was mine. Well, you gotta check the Patreon account. Thank you. So about board, what's the decision here, gentlemen? Uh, we're gonna go to bed, and he's going to. Uh, Deliver a message in the morning. Fair enough. Right, write it up. I can handle the uh, 
I've provided, uh, I've assisted quartermasters for armies before. Oh, yeah. I can do this. I can handle the provision. <clears throat> mending yep. the, mending Matthew's broken leg out in the middle of the storm. Poor light. Thrashing about. Could my reputation point possibly get us a cart as well? No. And you may only drop on re- reputation once a week. Unless you burn. Actually, you can't. You literally can't. It's a favor you're calling in. So, to mend a grievously wounded animal in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> in the midst of the storm, in the wet, with a torch or, or lamp that's flickering, the light threatening to snuff out. It's going to be an arduous test. Yeah, seems fair. Either arduous heal or arduous handle animal. It's up to you. Go ahead and take your time. Uh, it takes him three hours to do this in the first place. Harper's not in a rush. He'll tell you to take your time. Nine hours. The hell I'm taking my time. You see this fucking rain? Well, <laughs> then if we can just get a cart. And I guess I'll just catch up. This animal's going to die out in this rain from cold if we, if we take our time. Horse can live it's one way or the other. I gotta do it this way. Trust me. I'm, well, a, I'm a doctor. I'll assist you if you're handling <laughs> animal. Are you using handle animal or heal? I'm using heal. Okay. Okay. Well, then I can okay. Go. So, um, no, can't help. An arduous test will be a 34% chance to succeed. Oh, God. All right. Let's see what happens. Mm. I'm gonna re-roll. Okay. Why is that? Oh, so I get a misfortune point. Hmm. The rolling is not for the point. Mm-mm. Well, the first one was free. No, that's true. Didn't make it. Oh yeah. I thought it was critical failure. Like, oh. <laughs> no, shoot or Matthew dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, your. You medicate this horse with the uh, C Pazza opium. You expend the bandages. And the, 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 it does, simply does not take. If you had taken your time with the first roll, would you have made it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not spending nine hours out in the rain. <laughs> it's long. It's a very long night. Uh, go ahead and, uh, if you would, go ahead and spend a gold crown in order to get a cart to get him back to uh, the, the city. Yeah. Yeah, that I can just uh, take no, 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 time, no, it's all... Add plus 10% to your, um, to your, to your chances, yeah, but it, it's, it's three times the normal time. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's now the morning, and the storm has let up. Uh, those who were out the night before are suffering from sleep deprivation, which means you all gain, oh my gosh, 16 mental peril. So that's at least, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Elisa, Harper, and Warren. You all begin to gather supplies and start, at the very minimum, heading to to, to Westgate. Um, unfortunately, Matthew is uh, still infirmed. Right, no, I obviously wouldn't take him. He has been uh, placed into uh, Animal Hospital. I guess, for lack of a better term. Probably with the Grawl Stutters in uh, Slum Slum Row. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you all gather that morning and you have kind of begin to head toward Westgate. To where the, 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 the area where you expect to gather um, for this day. Close your own nags out of commission for now. Sorry about it. Well, he's more of a stud than an egg, but yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> he, uh... That is a prized animal, I'm sorry. It literally is a prized animal. <laughs> this is... That's what I said. I know. You might have mentioned figure. It literally won contests. All right. yeah. Here at, uh... Here in Westgate, this is the gate's westernmost of the Rindle. 
the markets are already busy with people passing in and out of the city. It is late in autumn, so uh, merchants are gathering their things to head back to other settlements throughout the girdle or perhaps even further west uh, to Fiefstead. You suspect most of them are local, local in the sense that they're one or two days out. You gather before a, a coaching station called the Last Hearth, uh, where you can see a number of carriages and carts and horses and other train, other people kind of who would go this way and that gather. Without a doubt, this is the Last Hearth. This is where you know you're supposed to meet the others. Meet Hexenster and meet, meet uh, Barrister Rosalia Mansfield. And you can see, for the three of you, bleary-eyed as you are, as the sun's kind of Behind you, fortunately, but the this, this, this sky is still bright and yellow. Um, you can see a similarly bleary-eyed, uh, uh, with a bloodshot-eyed uh, Master Hexenster in his, his uh, black robes, looking a bit disheveled. He was not kidding when he said it would take him the night, not only just to draw up the new contracts, but, um, but to do whatever other things he had to do to prepare or to explain what's happening. Good morning, he says, as you see a number of pigs cross this cobblestone street led by a uh, master of pig's flesh, some sort of drover, a sword, or a farmer. Only somebody who raises hogs would be called a farmer, I guess, right? A peasant droving a... What, what, are, what are a gathering of pigs? A gathering of pigs? Yeah. A herd? Herd pigs? Oh, not a herd. Pigs are a herd. Hogs. A pogstead of pigs. Pogstead. It's double set of Z. I don't know that. A, pogst- a pogstead of pigs are crossing the thoroughfare, and you are meeting. Uh, well, I am. Um, it appears that uh, I was not the only one up late last night. Burning's a midnight oil. He's rubbing his eyes. Maybe we can take. Uh, we can get. We can break off fast inside the last half. Yeah. Hmm. Please. Warren does not look too pleased with his, his situation. He has a very deep scowl on his face, drenched to the bone. Yeah. Bleary eyed. The sounds of the streets kind of fade away as you come inside this somewhat busy coaching station. Where are they are, right? Number of folks already gathered, uh, breaking their fast, doing their business, preparing for their meal, waiting in line uh, to get their rasher of bacon and porridge. Uh, I'm sure you can probably imagine in your heads. Um, there are a great number of people here. Well, I have uh, gathered everything. Uh, the papers are, as I described, you can have. Ooh, stubble stifles a stifles a sigh and a long yawn that causes the three of you to yawn almost. <clears throat> As I said before, um, in the details are very written and fine, clean. I am sorry, he says. How are you all doing this morning? Uh, I'm feeling like death warmed over, to be honest. I'm very melancholy. Like, yeah, just I just don't want to be around. <laughs> right now. Uh, I'll just say that, well, Matthew's not feeling great, so left him with an animal bender. <sighs> I'm so sorry to hear that. So, I'll just walk. Well, fortunately, we all gathered here early enough. I think I can still get you some horses, but uh, I have drawn up the contracts here. Great, uh, I'll sign it, as I'll push everyone else out of the way. <laughs> uh, so, as I said before, you will be paid... 60 gold crowns uh, in total, 10 crowns now, which I will give you upon signature of this document. Make your mark, as he looks to Alistair. Uh, 21 reaching Kale Tyrion, which the barrister Rosalia will handle, and then 30 upon the barrister Mansfield's safe return to Durandal. Yeah, we know. We read it earlier. <laughs> Making sure it's the same. <laughs> yes. well, fine, I suppose we can just get to the signature then, he says, kind of abruptly and turns the paper around and expects you all to make your mark. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to read it over. 
You'll be provided a transport. You'll find Captain Wolfgang at Westgate to provide distraction. A military unit led by Commander Tannenfelder will leave Durandal simultaneously. Sorry, that's not in the contract. My apologies. It basically states <laughs> that you'll be, pra- you'll be paid the crown, 60 crowns each. Mm-hmm. And you'll be provided with transport. And you're, re- you're required for any additional help that's your job to pay for it and make sure they're trustworthy. Should you have any hirelings that you already have under your employ or wish to employ in the near few, in the near term, as it says, to be distinct in the contract. Extremely near term. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's four hours. It's it's four hours? <clears throat> well, we should probably get these papers off of the uh, table before we have our drinks and food. <laughs> yeah. I will sign first. What are we all sign? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Alistair. Showing surprising literacy. Alistair will sign his name as neatly as he can while uh, sort of casting a glance at it. <laughs> Banneker? I'll put an X on there. You don't know your letters? I'm surprised. He says he takes the papers and rolls it up. D- d- dust putting stain on it. And... <sighs> Why'd you close that book? Well, <laughs> the ink was obviously still wet. <laughs> oh no. God damn it, Brian. Right. <laughs> he has to follow us on the road. <laughs> yes. Well, with that, uh, your crowns. You will dispense with crowns already marked, freshly minted with the uh, countenance, countenance of the Baroness's face. Ten each. Ten, ten crowns each, that's right. You, uh, you can put mine towards any... <laughs> Thing the party says, needs. Durindle. And then in Martyr We Trust or something like that. Are they called Durindles? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'll just take the coins and put them in the middle. Well, the captain's armor. You can do whatever you want. There. Hell. I'll take a three. I, I will not touch that. Or two back. The barrister Mansfield, she is waiting with uh, Captain Wolfgang and the others uh, just outside of Westgate. Uh, whenever you're ready, of course. Uh, they you. are expecting you to arrive just in uh, by midday. Can I borrow the, uh, the cores way harder, please? Why Hello. Well, that's great. You can look in the back of your character folio if you're looking for weapons, armor, and stuff. Uh, so oh, I boy, what a handy character. Yeah. It is. is. That should be per- for sale for anyone who <laughs> <wants it. laughs> uh, I Idea, like, uh, want to do the shopping when we take a break? That way we can keep... keep sure. It. Yeah, that way we... Sure. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I was just going to do the one thing. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Can we buy stuff? Yeah. I have money now. Yeah, I would say maybe <laughs> we... money now. I'd say maybe we do that during break. Okay. Um, we like cover it in game right now, but we'll do it during break. Episodes and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure everyone's fine. But there's anything absolutely critical you must have right now, but, but I love Dungeons and Accounting. <laughs> uh, are we gonna be above board? And yeah, for those people don't see, I got mine. <laughs> um, uh, do, do we want to do your thing? You want to send your message? Are we gonna break our fast? And uh, uh, well, we... above board, like Terwin would honestly let you decide. Hey, like it's your contacts, um, you know. If you don't think she's trustworthy, then you know he wouldn't make it. But uh, if you do think she's trustworthy enough to deliver a message to Seed Hill, he he. Uh, We've certainly crossed this road a couple times now. So what's the decision? To send the message or not to send the message? The deliberation is over. We must make a decision. She's 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 actually not a contact of mine. Robin Grimby and Celia and the Corvo are my contacts. I don't have her as a contact. That's correct. The answer is no. So I'm going to go with a hard no on that. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to say if you want a message sent, I can try and get Grimby to do it. He's the only person I would trust. Uh, which one is Grimby? The man who owns Dire Straits. Actually, that's a better idea. A super me, criminal? You can give me half those coins back I gave you. So you'll give Grimby five crowns to deliver a message in secrecy. In secrecy, five crowns. I think he'll do it. I think he'll tell you it's going to be in secrecy. Got nothing to do with me. That's right. All right. You gotta trust your contacts, and that's paid well. I that's think. a lot of money. That's, that is an ins- that's an insane amount of money. Well, that's a good postal yeah. service thing. That's good. Yeah. All right. 
<clears throat> well, anything else you wish to conclude with Master Hexen's turn before you strike out to meet the captain and others? Nope. Verify we're getting horses. Ah, yes. I have already seen to it. You will find a company just outside of Buttsgate. You will know them when you see them. They shall have horses for you as well. Master Wolfgang has already attended to it. All right. Let's do this thing. All right, Agnes. Time to go. Uh, I wish you Godspeed, Caetirian. It's a long trek. It is not close. But you were doing a great service for the Baroness. She will look kindly upon this as a gesture of loyalty to her cause. And to have her to owe you a favor is, well, I need not say. Alright. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get this show on the road and let's see what, we, what we're working with. Right. Again, just the barrister, right? Spansfield, yes. All right. Just outside of Westgate, as you pass beyond these, uh, you pass beyond these large stone towers, kind of fashioned to the side of the storm horn hills, where they rise almost like fangs around the entire city. To look at Durendal from a distance, it almost does resemble a, as they call it, the cauldron. It looks like a boiling cauldron with all the smoke that rises over the low hills. You can barely, you can barely see the, you can't even see the buildings. They can. Have, intermingle with the uh, surrounding stone hills. Even the palace is, you can't see it from your outside the gates. And you pass beyond the gates and the sounds of uh, the city kind of begin to disappear behind you. And when somebody is still sharpening their sword, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sharpening my gun. That's right. The warbler. The people laughing. There are so many weird sounds on here, by the way. Thanks, Sirenscape. Thanks. This is super cool. So as you come outside the city, you can see a a great host that is unmistakably Commander Tenenfelder. You can see a great number of brigandine soldiers, almost almost 20 strong. And they're intermingled with a number of other people, up to and including at least two score of oxen. The oxen are currently being, uh, well, by this incredibly, the largest one you've ever seen. She is leaning on these ropes and kind of pulling like such. She's drawing the oxen behind her, leading them. And they're kind of like just kind of all strung together somewhat. And they are arranged around this massive galley. Like, to describe what this thing is that they're wheeling around on a a huge wagon would be a great understatement. It appears to look like a small waterborne ship. uh, But it is actually affixed in this massive framework that's been built around and in it with fresh planked wood. With these huge wagon wheels kind of straddling on either side. And the the prow of the ship rises at least 20 foot off the ground. Like this huge ship. There's no mast. There's no sails. You can't even see if there's an after or forecastle. But it literally looks like they've taken the ship from the river uh, and have borne it upon this huge cradle that's been built around it. And all these oxen are lashed to it. There's a man kind of leaning over the edge of the of the wagon and says, I got it! I got it! He makes some sort of sound and they're just kind of... The whole thing seems to shake and tremble and shit and... and what do we call it? Tramble earlier? <laughs> <laughs> it begins to kind of like tremble for a moment, uh, kind of r- rattling on the framework, almost threatening to teeter for a moment and... There's this 
sort of sound. And this green smoke kind of billows forth from the top of the ship and dissipates into the air. God damn it! You hear from up above on the ship. The commander on horseback turns toward the lot of you and he dismounts. A stern-faced looking man with a with a tall helmet that is crowned with a cross above the very top and has arrows and archers um, flip news, what do they call that? Uh, or nose guard over the front of it. And he will approach. And he says, you all the Dufresne? That way is... Lieutenant Velda extends his hand out. Uh, take, take his hand and shake it. Magnificent, isn't she? He says he turns toward this massive ship. Yeah, you got a boat on land. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Boat in the air. Boat on land. Same, same. I've never seen a boat in the air. Except, I mean, when they build in it, you know, sometimes it's suspended. Come on over. Oh. I'm impressed. What, what's the deal with it? Why not just use a horse? He uh, points beyond the uh, he points beyond the um, gathering of oxen and horses and gathering. There's at least forty people here, and you can see there are these throngs of people wearing what look like uh, shifts of wool, and they are lying before it and bearing above their heads burning torches, and they're preaching to the people as they're pointing toward the ship and then looking toward the people and preaching about the makings of the suit stained prophet. And lo, it fell from the sky, and thus was born, he born of flame, born anew of light, born of fire and smoke. Oh, yeah. Huh. You let them talk about that? What are you going to do? Nothing. Yeah. Well, I can tell you what uh, Saul Peterman would do with them, but that's... It's their concern, yeah. concern, not ours. Let the men do what they want. So that's the thing that fell out of the sky? Yes. Ah. Wolfgang has come to call it something very different. This is the damnable gift that we are to bring some baron of such and such in Kale Tyrion. We're taking that thing with us? That's what Wolfgang says. <clears throat> Warren just shakes so his head. I thought like, we were supposed to go in secret. That's very conspicuous. We're supposed to go in secret. Is that thing coming with us, or is it going with the, the, the you know, you guys? Let's go talk to Wolfgang. He has the helmet kind of beneath the crook of his arm as he's walking. So you've been in town for about a month now, I hear. He's saying as you're kind of walking toward this massive galley borne upon wheels and the frame. Yeah, what's it to you? It's a question. He says abruptly. I do something to offend you, sir. You'll have to shrugs. You'll have to forgive my dear friend. He's been up all night. Mm. Keeping a uh, regimen of sleep and exercise will do that to you. My sympathies. Mm. Perhaps a bit of coffee at the last pot will lift your spirits. And if not, let's hoist your way up to the top there and you can see the rest of the world. I'll keep my feet on the ground. What is this thing? It is an aerostat. A man says very seriously and sternly. He's wearing dark kind of he's wearing dark clothes. He has a gray beard. He's got balding the top of his pate with kind of these deep steely <laughs> eyes. He looks a bit like uh, Davos Seaworth, I guess you can say. I trust you're Dufresne. Flash the badge. Wolfgang Copper. That's what they call me. Don't think we've had the honor. It's a pretty famous last name. Hi. He says, kind of acknowledging it. Harper Clavenger. Say one follows death. <clears throat> That's the boss. He nods. Did you roll, Stutter? Rhodes. I put my hand out. 
He, uh, he simply nods. He knows that he is missing his right hand. So, uh... Lady? This is the thing that flew and now it rolls? <laughs> so I guess flew is... It was. It is. Fly is a misconception since it crashed and burned and... It's returned to created the, these fools profit. It's returned to the natural order, isn't it? <laughs> As it did. Regardless, we're taking the Madeline West. We as in us, or we as in I point over to the Brigandine. Them. Commander Tenenfelder is taking contingent of twenty men to bridge distraction. I'm sure it has already been explained to you by Hexenstern, but we are carrying precious cargo. Right. I, we do know that much. Is that it? This, being, this thing is the precious cargo? No. For but Grace has something exquisite in mind for the Baron to the West to appease him along with the Barrister Mansfield. You're going to be doing a uh, a little debate, I suppose, I guess you'd call it. Is there not a good chance that these 13 followers are going to try to follow the ship? I'm sure they will. That's what we've got from Bigley. The woman over there. It's okay, she can... She'll knock the priest out. I see her knock the piss off an oxen. I'm sure she can do the same for a priest. So her last name's Bigley. So the people call her. Uh, Perhaps not the most favorable names. No, but, uh, I think. Well, she's taking a liking to it. No. Well, I mean, most of them don't have shoes, so I say if they're willing to follow it for two weeks or three weeks or however long it's going to take, they should just get, they should be allowed to have it. Hi. I'm going to issue to another man. Sammy, come on down. Sammy! He calls up to the top of the ship that seems impossibly high off the ground, at least 20 feet. And you can see this diminutive looking fellow, he swings a rope down that's kind of knotted and corded and he begins to kind of come down to his feet and walk across the ground. He's Grawlstetter. Nope. I don't think we've had the pleasure. Morning. Morning, all right. He tips his hat. He doffs his hat. It's a hat that's slanted just so with a plume of uh, some exotic bird or whatever it may be else off the top of it. So this thing is going with us. It and is. Which way are we going? Okay, he says. We're going west. Well, that's obvious. Keltirian is to the west. Which road? Let's, uh... I mean, the distractions, which way... Let's do... Let's, let's give it a... The is which way, and which way are we? We can, talk, we can talk about that in just a few moments. Uh, we need to finish up some business with Cap Commander Tannenfelder. Excuse me, he says. He, he turns around and walks away. Sammy, what do you do around here? Well, take care of her, he says. The Madeline. Is she a beaut? I suppose so, if that's what you're uh, interested in. Uh, kind of ridiculous if you ask me. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the only thing. It's the only one I've ever seen. About as big as baleen. It's both the most and least attractive, therefore. Well, yeah, she's a bit burnt up when we acquired her. And spend some time fixing it all up. Just gonna ask. What what do, what the hell does it do? It's so impressive because all I've seen it do is spit orange smoke and do Three. nothing. Shimmy. <laughs> Climb on up, he says. He runs over to the rope. Come on, get on up now. He means climbing up the rope himself. I'll pass. I'm a bit tired. Yeah, he's trembling in his boots. Oh, I'll go look and see what it is. I mean, come on, don't be a pussyfoot. Man doesn't. Man doesn't have an adventure in his soul. He's dead. At least I will be looking. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Terrible. 
Warren will spit in his hands, rub them together, and climb the rope. <laughs> Alistair, I, I uh... No, I'll keep my feet on the ground for this one. Somebody's got to stay around here and watch and wait for uh, Wolfman to come back. I'm not saying it's a death trap. I'm saying it was a death trap. And still is a death trap. <laughs> I'll just look. I'll watch for I'll say that to Alistair. <laughs> yeah. I figure I'll get to see heaven soon enough. I don't need some <laughs> contraption helping me do it. It already caught fire and fell to the ground once. I'm not saying it's trying to catch a fire. But, but that's probably going to be probably. Ways, Yeah. You clamber up this thing and it is hmm. the height of which it bears almost the, upon, the, upon the frame and wooden wagons that, that has borne it is almost uh, the same height as the stone parapets that surround Arendelle. From here you can see the Baroness's palace and you feel this kind of queasiness in your stomach as you realize the ship has kind of shifted slightly just a tick to the right. Um, as the footing's a little bit uneven or even you feel like you're kind of walking up up uh, uphill. But um, the aft and, ca- and forecastle are really carved in all this decorative work but there's a Serious damage, like wood burn everywhere, and there's been planks that have been replaced. Uh, but it otherwise would resemble like literally a ship without a mast. The crow's nest looks more like a priest's pulpit uh, in the center of the entire thing. And you can see this very large and oversized and likely a very untrustworthy boiler uh, kind of resting in the back, and that it's seeping this kind of greenish smoke. Lying all across the the, 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 the floor of this, the, the top deck, uh, are these massive woven pieces of canvas that are thick and partially rolled up and connected all over with these thick mooring ropes. Uh, that right there is what used to lift the aerostat up in the air. That's the arc, right? I've been working on that for about two months now, but uh, it just ain't coming around. He picks up this heavy kind of wrench and tong! It makes this ringing sound. You kind of all back up, realizing it's probably full of bottled lightning. It ain't gonna do nothing. It don't do nothing. It don't just ain't turning over for us. The old damn thing is mostly useless as much as uh, times I put into trying to bring her back, but uh, <coughs> Madeline just ain't. Uh, well, she ain't ready to go yet. We'll see if the folks at Kale Tyrion can do something about it. So, the oxen have to pull this. You got the right of it. Two scores strong down there, he says. And he kind of leans over the edge. And you kind of lean over the edge, too, and feel, the, once again, the queasiness kind of returns. You can see them. And they're small down there. We got a whole team of them running that way. <clears throat> we get them all lashed together once Hrung gets them all hooked up to the to the yoke and well we're gonna go that way he points out to the distance and way out there you can see along the blue horizon what looks like the dis- distant mountain somewhere far out there beyond the Stormhorn Hills we'll probably head towards Stone st- toward uh Steadwall between there and Hastings Tenefelder and the rest rest are gonna go with, go with this two to Hastings they're gonna depart south off road, if you will. We're gonna have, go ahead of us just a, about three or four miles. So they all gonna be in front of us. Well, in front of us in a way, I suppose. You wouldn't see them from here. You probably see the smoke comes up off them hoods that they're storming across the way. You surely hear them if they're approaching. Anybody up ahead will know they're coming. So it'll be a flank. The flank is. Well, it's a faint, I guess is what Wolfgang would call it. Once we get to Hastings, we depart ways. Mm. Tannenfelder going south, we're going west. That's my understanding, at least. This is this is a giant, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to call this besides a, I mean, modest tips, it's a, it's a bullseye on our backs. That's right. That's right. Who to think to uh, bring a barrister on the back of a big old bullseye with three fellers, or two fellers, one lady, and the rest of y'all? Nah, they Baroness's enemies expect the the barrister to be gone with twenty strong brigandine. 
Commander Tannenfelder and Wolfgang Orr work that out. Yeah. Well. Better minds than mine, then. Well, military minds, I suppose, in a way. Mm. I wouldn't credit uh, Master Copper as being a master ta tactician, but uh, he is plucky and determined, if anything. Well, back in my days, I would have left the 20 alone and attacked this, but that would have been, you know, my thoughts. Well, you got to... Easy bray. You got to ride the horse that's been saddled for you sometimes. Sure. Ride a horse here, isn't it? <laughs> this well, thing defensible in any way? Huh. Funny you should miss that. Come on up the aft. Come on now. You head up these stairs to the front of the of the ship and you can see what appears to be this huge brass and iron apparatus that's about as broad as a man's uh, arm span. And you can see these number of brass tubes extending about 15 feet each kind of clustered together. It's the old puckle gun. Things go wrong. We get her loaded up and unload. We send the air of heaven down anybody trying to, well, trying to do anything. I never fire on these things, but Kronk said she know what to do. Being the count that she was an artillerist at some point. Well, she's hard to hear him. You speak up when you talk to her, but... Yeah, there's the puckle gun. I reckon if you fired this thing, if you're around this thing firing all the time, you get hired, hard to hear him, too. I imagine you fire a thing like this, you never hear a damn thing again. <laughs> I ain't heard no puckle gun firing off the edge of no damn walls, but I'd imagine that's pretty loud. Not only that, there's probably enough concussion from these barrels here, right? I reckon that it may knock this damn thing off the off the frame. <laughs> Between me, you, and the fence post, uh, well, I don't know exactly how safe it is. But it's enough to scare anyone. <clears throat> I don't really know what's going on. But it looks impressive. Well, it makes a big damn noise, I know that. And it's mighty intimidating just as is. A man points a pistol, you know you're dead to rights. A man points ten pistols the size of your blacksmith's leg. Well, you know you're knowing your time is in. There ain't going to be nothing left of you. So... Hopefully it's enough. Mm. Any of y'all ever been on a ship before? Can't say that. Well, yep. Yes. I'm probably wanted to pop your cherry. There ain't no, there ain't no sails to attend to. There ain't no sailors on this ship. The only captain's Wolfgang, but I wouldn't be calling him captain. <clears throat> Just call him Master Copper. He'd prefer that. Can I tell if these guns swivel or if it... Oh, yeah. They swivel. Set. Oh, yeah. 37 degrees. <laughs> now, go ahead. Pull that latch right there. Pull that lever. Give it a, give it a spin. Don't tell me you're going to be riding this thing. <laughs> you're kind of pulling the kind of... There's this lever and there's these huge cogs that go... <laughs> you know, locks in place at a 37 degree angle both ways. Mighty impressive, right? Unless we'll attack from the rear. Well, we attack from the rear, you just better get fucking going. That's a... <laughs> that's oh. a Tannenfelder. I, I'm <laughs> that's what y'all are here for, as I understand it. I'm uh, told you all some saw two sons of bitches. Y'all uh, get shit done. Yes, life, liberty, and all that other stuff. As they say in the north, some do dirt dunmen. <laughs> Reliable types. Sure. He leans up against the side of the ship. Please don't tell he me. Stri he strikes. He strikes a match and begins to smoke a pipe. Please don't tell me you're going to be riding this thing way up here, the whole, the whole way down. Well, I had it kind of in mind to do so. I mean, someone's got to look out on the horizon. I mean, get the best vantage point up here. This thing's balancing all the way down there on a bumpy road. Well, I wouldn't call it balancing so much as it is just all held together a spit and wish. Seems kind of top-heavy, isn't it? Wouldn't it fall over? Well, I didn't realize you're a uh, master of the engineering sciences. 
<laughs> no, it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a feeling in my gut. It just doesn't set right with me if this thing was moving. Well, I can tell you this. I'm the one who built the framework. Well, I to I, say I had my people build it. I guess you got to trust in your own handiwork, but uh, no offense, little young feller. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't be up here. Young feller! <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. You guess this man's probably in his 50s. <laughs> you're, you're a fine bunch. <laughs> So how do you all find yourselves, late my lady? How do you find yourselves all wrapped up in this business with Master Copper? Well, this only knows how to bend the knee. Well, we could ask you the same thing. You being a brawl sitter. Well, I'm begging not. your pardon. I was talking to the lady. Well, obviously we have two other ladies here. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we're helping out the Baroness, of course. <clears throat> so, stated she needed help. Sun, the moon, and the stars in Durandal. <clears throat> She's got big things in mind for us. All of us here in Durandal. Yeah. She does. Tell you what, she ain't no bastard king. That's for sure. Oh. I think that's uh, as much as this I can take. I'm, I'm going to go and get off. <laughs> All right, then. Got up his crawl. We've had a... Doesn't like heights. Figures. Well, you gotta you get accustomed to it. Maybe he will over time. We've had a few bad experiences being up so high. That's all. Yeah. Well, I'll save know. from the I'll save from the rope. I'm a kingsman. That's what's <laughs> wrong with me. Well, I need somebody to stay up here with me. I can't do this all alone. I mean, it'd be awful boring up here if I was by myself. Someone uh, stay up here and keep me company on the travel. I would want to, but I have duties down below. Now you can do your duty off the side of the ship when we start moving? No. I belong on the ground. <laughs> ah! Alright then. Alright, well, well, good luck to you. I mean, I don't know what good a sword is going to do up here. Alright. Well, I'm not really much of a sword type. Oh, yeah, I mean... If you, if you want to stay, by all means. I could. It's an interesting piece of machinery. I wouldn't mind looking at it a little bit. I'll well, tell you more about it. There we go. One. This ain't right. <laughs> what about you? You little liver like them? You want to stay up here with me? I'm down on the ground, actually. Oh, that's right. My apologies. That's right. Alice, right. Go. That's right. He's reading his leaning right. down, you know. Well, let's all head down and talk to, uh... Talk to Master Copper. Get things straightened out. How's that sound? That sounds lovely. Thank you. Um, this is quite a remarkable piece of machinery. Uh, I have no bloody idea how it works. I'm sure you'll have to show me someday. Yeah, we'll have plenty to talk about on the way. Let's go on down. Join your king's man. While they were talking, I'm going to see if I can find uh, Wolfgang and Strike up a brief conversation yeah. about the others. Master Copper, will hear, Wolfgang will finish his conversation. Sort of wait for him to pull about. Sorry about that. Bit of business. The rest of them are uh, up on the deck admiring uh, this, uh, this unusual piece of uh, whatever the hell it is you got here. Marvelous and sh marvelous Shirley, yeah. damnable uh, contraption. A bit of uh, surprising amount of uh, of uh, pride and arrogance, let's say. The Baroness is uh, dead serious when she is uh, when she intends to get what she wants. She intends to send something that will attract attention. This Baron surely turned an eye toward uh, the going-ons between the Barrister. He needs the Baroness with this. Do you think this is a, an intent to maybe uh, accidentally show off a little bit? Kind of uh, accidentally showing... Accidentally, he makes the, uh, the mm -hmm. showing cards... Aye. Yeah. 
Her Grace is a uh, woman of age who's lived through a few wars, been through uh, some terrible shite. I suspect she knows what she's doing. Wouldn't be here if I, if I didn't believe that. We probably uh, don't know this, but uh, my uncle, uh, he traveled with your father a long time ago. Your uncle? Yes. I don't know. He didn't speak much of his uh, of his works or travels, I understand. But uh, if he ever mentioned the name Krim, that's a uh, that's my uncle. Have you read uh, Fendwayus's Beyond the Pale? I've heard about it. Talks about your uncle. Talks about the Returners. Talks about the journey north. Nobody coming back. Yeah. That was, uh, that was the way of it, but, uh, you know, he always met a way of found in his way home. Ain't a little worse for wear. Kind of maybe a nick in the ear, kind of like a, a dog that's been in uh, one too many fights. But uh, <laughs> I suppose that uh, we're all dogs that have been in one too many fights. <laughs> so I'm taking that we know each other somehow. I am sure. I'm sure that, uh... We took the piss together at some point in our small clothes a long time ago. Maybe. You suspect that Wolfgang's probably about 54. Which makes you about somewhere. Yeah, and I'm young. That's right. You know, but... Eh, that's a, uh... But, you know, what are years on this point? It's hard to tell how old anyone is if they have, like, war years on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, I'm, I'm a lot farther from home than you are. How do you find yourself in this lot, then? It's a long way from Warhoff. I was, uh... I was shown the mercy of the Arendane twice, I suppose. I, too, was shown the mercy of the Unifier. He raises his hand. Yes. My unit was uh, was overrun, and I was spared. And then I was spared again. Put me in the service of uh, these folks. It's not all bad, but I sure beats a uh, sure beats a prison labor camp for thirty of my best years. Well, I got off lucky. A man's given a chance for redemption. He takes it. Especially when it's ordered by a king. Here we are. Anyway, I wouldn't uh, take up uh, another minute of your time, but uh, I thought I would uh, come and reminisce about uh, old days that weren't all that great. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about on the road. There's a lot of road and a lot of words. Old stories and new. Yeah. Cracks a smirk. I'll give him a nod and a sort of smirk and return and then turn around, hopefully, to see them uh, descending the rope. Absolutely. It's a contraption up there. I don't know what it does. It flies uh, apparently. It not much work. anymore. And you hear that copper, Master Copper says. Well, Elisa's going to stay up there for the ride. Um, Rolf said it was looking like he didn't want to be up there all alone. It's a long way. Mm -hmm. Pretty boring. I've done the most that I can. You hear the woman say, exasperated, as she walks over, kind of with a solid, just kind of walking like a block of muscle. No, no real, no real tone to her. No gait that resemble a woman is just kind of like a stony faced looking person kind of approaching. She's easily a head, of, head higher than all of you. Oh. Lady, this is Dufresne. He introduces her. What's her name? Friends call her Morgana. You call her what you want. 
I take to like in the wrong bigly. It suits me, I suppose, she says. Pull me whatever, it doesn't matter. This is Morgana Elroy. What I need to know is this, who's heading, who's walking the road with me ahead? I'm not doing it by myself again, Wolfgang. Well, you heard the woman. Who's gonna ride with her? No, I couldn't do that. Boss, you're not very good at that. Not very good at what? Of course we're asking for I'll scout ahead with her. Oh, that. <laughs> no, I'm not. You want it. You're a poor choice for that. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, it is. My lady, I'll ride with you. Someone has a delicious soft name. Hmm? You're the combination for it. <laughs> well, <Sound effect. laughs> it's not much time left now. Do you have any things that you need left remaining? Yeah, you traveled the road to the west before? Yep. Been a bit west. Tastings. Never been western than that. I'm looking for someone who's been western than Hastings. I have. Well, you're not riding with me, she says. Stay with me then. Tend to the maps. Help us navigate the way. That would not be a very good uh, use of my, uh, my abilities. Oh, goats, the woman says as she says exasperated walking away. I should ride with the lady. All right, then. Tim is the maps. Who among you know it? Who among you can read your letters? I think our best candidate's up above. She's down here. Everyone's down here at this yeah. point. Yeah. Well, once you all decide what you're going to do, after all, you know your own skills better than I do. Mm-hmm. We need to divvy up duties. Nobody writes for free. Everyone pulls their share. Everybody bears part of the load. No free load scout. No sleepers. Any other business left at Westgate you need to attend to, do it now. And we'll break here. We'll come back for episode 34 just briefly.